here we are at the uh, Royal Academy in London's Piccadilly, uh, where we are present at an enormous mammoth exhibition of works of art by Britain's most celebrated living artist, David Hockney. Um, David, who is, in fact, some standing somewhere behind me, uh, has just received the Order of Merit, the highest award in the entire kingdom. And this exhibition goes from his student days right up to the very present with his uh, contribution to real avant-garde art via using an iPad. I'm talking to Edith Devaney, who's co-curated the exhibition at the Royal Academy. Edith, um, what are we looking at here? We're looking at iPad prints. Um, these, is, these are part of a series of works that David has, um, has developed as one piece, so he, he sees it as an installation. And these works were done on his iPad. He spent many months perfecting his technique and they have all the painterly qualities of his painting. And at first, when you see them, you think they look like washes. Yeah. Um, there's 51 prints in this room and a, a wonderfully huge oil painting as well. And together, it constitutes one work called oh. The Arrival of Spring. What I think this whole gallery does is it, 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 um, it refers back to David's understanding of um, how to design a theatrical set. It has all of that notion of the... Um, drama. I mean, it is. It's about the drama of spring. Yes. It's being played out and the, the visitor feels very much as if they're centre stage. Yes, I could see that. Yes, we're in the middle of the whole thing. Yes. It's happening all around yeah. us. And yeah. this, this is another uh, oil. Is it? No, no. That's this an, is, this is an iPad. iPad print, yeah. My goodness. But you see, they have all of the painterly qualities yes. of, of his oil paintings and watercolours. The, this room is, is called uh, Tree and Totems and it's spectacularly colourful, Edith. Yes. Yes. Uh, can you explain the, the, um, the, 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 the depths of the colour and the unusual use of it? Well, I think one of the things that David points out about colour in winter is that there's a lot of it. That we, yes. we tend to think of winter as being very grey and very dull, but actually there is colour there if you, want to, if you want to see it, if you choose to see it. Pains to say that the exhibition isn't retrospective, it's not, it's all about new work. But this gallery does have a lot of his, um, very, it's very carefully picked early works, really to contextualise the later landscapes. This is, this is him at the end of his period of three years at the Royal College of Art. He's going abroad, he's beginning to look at the world. You can, I mean, what I love about this one is the jokiness of it. He was terribly excited about going to the Alps. And, um, when he crossed the Alps, he was in the back of a transit van with no window, so he didn't see it. So this is wholly imagined. Um, but, but I love the kind of geological abstract mountain. Absolutely um, terrific. One of the Grand Canyon works. I mean, I think that this is, was a subject that David was interested in for, for quite a long period of time. He tried to photograph it, and we've got photo collages um, in, in the exhibition of the Grand Canyon, but realised that actually to create that sense of space, the only way to do it is by, by painting it. Yeah, yeah. And it's the first time he used the grid system. So he was able to kind of build up these multiple perspectives, so it kind of completely stretches out the view. Well, that was what, I, what struck me about it, is um, I've even flown over the Grand Canyon in a small airplane, mm. and there's no way that you'll get this. No. It's, this is, an, again, yes. totally imagined. Yeah, totally imagined, yes. For me in this exhibition, the, 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 the more recent film work that we see at the end of the exhibition with the multi-screens, very closely related yes. to the thought process of yes. this piece. Yes. It's a development of the same, um, the same preoccupations, yes. like the depiction of space. Yeah. So, Edith, can you tell me why David turned to the iPad? Well, I think his his answer would be because it provides another tool to create work. I mean, it's a, it, it, that, that's what it is. Um, and it's, it, what he loves is its convenience, because when he first started painting on the iPad, he said, you know, it's fantastic. You, um, you don't have to mix up your watercolours. You don't have to, to get your canvases ready. Yeah. And it's that immediacy that we see in a lot of his work yeah. from observation, that he sees, he sees a, a tree in full blossom in optimum light, and he's got his iPad, and immediately he can, he can 
do it yeah, straight he, away. He can also take a photograph of it on using the same apparatus. Yes, but he's not getting the depth. Is no, he? he's no. Not, you know, it's that whole thing about you know trying to 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 get rid of the the photographic point of view and the narrowness of that. And the iPad becomes for him a canvas or a piece of paper. He's able to chart his own progress in that way. And I think as an artist, what he finds immensely exciting, and which we all remember, and um, Picasso doing for the first time is that film of Picasso. Yes, boy drawing on the glass. On the glass. And this, you know, to see David's playback on the on the iPad, how the drawings built up, it's as fascinating as that. Edith, do you see any difference in quality uh, between the work that has a digital basis mm -hmm. and the work that is, uh, for example, the plein air? Uh, oil paintings. The oil paintings, yeah. Well, I think if you compare the oil paintings to these these prints that were done from the iPad, of course, the obvious thing is the texture. So what you're losing is the texture. But of course, because David knows that, because he knows that that's what you're losing, he has he has altered the form so that you don't get that sense of it being missing. And the fact that when you go up close, you realise that they're completely flat. Um, can be quite surprising because yes. I think these do have all of the quality of a very highly finished gouache painting. In terms of mastering new techniques, yeah. within this exhibition we see him mastering watercolour, we see him mastering photography in, in Pear Blossom Highway, yes. which is a culmination of his photographic collage experiment. We see him tackling fil digital film work again to great effect and, and of course the iPad, so he, um, he never stops learning. Astonishing. Thank you so much, You're Edith. You're very welcome. I hope you've enjoyed this very brief uh, taster of this wonderful exhibition. And uh, my advice to you is, uh, if you have enjoyed what you've seen, uh, you'd better see the whole exhibition. And if you want to do that, book now. Otherwise, you'll be queuing for a very long time, I predict. Right. Oh, OK. Very good. Thanks. Terrific. Well done, isn't it? Yeah.